At Kaslin, we believe that happiness is about more than entertainment. It's about being known, understood, loved. Introducing your new best friend, Buddy. Undocking. Warp drive active. Rudy! When Buddy imprints on you, he becomes your best friend for life. Buddy's state of the art AI is presented by the Data Network. This is New Eden. An anomaly even within the data break network. Ever since the dawn of aviation, mankind has looked to the skies with hopeful expectation of conquering the stars. Beyond the remnants of the shattered the gate, a universe of impossible splendor lies among an endless sea of stars. These are the sounds of the cosmos, the sounds that echo through every corner of the universe. This is New Eden FM. Happy Sunday, everyone. Welcome to New Eden FM. We have the music and the news to enhance your Sunday. I'm Alondria of the Galaxy, and we are live in game in the Anne Hare system at the Tribal Liberation Force Logistics Support Station, where we are consulting some experts on moving some cargo that we have to get. Somehow we ended up with about 12 Sharons full of tiny little hippo crabs stacked Statues, and we have to figure out where to move them, how to move them, and what to do with them. So we are consulting some experts to try and sort this out. While we do that, we're going to have some fun here. Now, here in the studio with us, we have Rose today. How you doing, Rose? I'm good. I just uh, got off work. You're uh, ready to enjoy the show. Awesome, awesome. Always glad to do whenever you can make it. And we also have our producer, Maestro McKenzie. How are you doing? Uh, good, good. You know, I'm um, still in recovery mode a little bit, uh, probably from um, huffing a little bit too much gas, but uh, that's, that's quite acceptable, I suppose. I have my little vomit pill right here in the corner here at the Data Break Studio, and of course, uh, we're ready to bring you your entertainment in music. This week, we have some nice smooth jazz for you. So uh, for those of you guys that have been waiting for this week's episode or this type of music, this genre, to come to the show, we hear you, and we've got that for you on today. That's great. I can't wait to hear it. Yeah, we we're, we got some exciting news to cover today. Big patch, big patch, lots of new stuff, some interesting crises in the game, and, you know, the war that was supposed to be over seems to still be heating up again, because... That some people have been up to some stuff. We're going to tell you about it. But before we do, let's listen to some of that wonderful jazz that Mackenzie's prepared for us today. On all things is Echoes and it's online. You need to classify threes to obtain the blueprint. Uh, so that's that's uh, what you're going to have to do in order. It can be an industrial manufactured after it's blue, uh, obtaining its blueprint from the market. Okay, that's what that is. Now, there's also uh, ship upgrade experimental data. 
It's uh, experimental data from examining various ship debris. It includes classified info as detailed ship structure, command system, and fire control system of different ships. It's used to uh, reverse engineer blueprints of advanced custom ships. That's what you get from the uh, classified three. Okay. Now you you got some new skills as well because you, you're going to have to get the uh, polymer material manufacturer. That's what you use to uh, in manufacturing polymer material. Okay, and then you also got uh, Concord Capital Ship Invention Principles. Uh, that's going to master it to increase your invention efficiency for Concord Capital Ships. Okay. Now we also have new cores. We do have special faction cruiser, trailblazer, nanocore op box. It's been added to the Concord Pass Shop, so you can't get that with your Concord points. So if you do get your hands on one of those new cruisers, you're going to make sure you have their Concord points going too, so that you can get yourself to nanocore for that. Now they, they did do a lot of balance adjustments as well. Now the uh, the increased uh, repairing distance and effective logistics frigates. They added the roll bonus to optimal range plus 100%, accuracy fall off plus 100%, and remote repair effect plus 50%. And they added two single attribute resistance bonuses of 15% and 25% respectively to assault frigates and assault destroyers. So since different factions excel in different technologies, the type of resistance added is different as well. So which one you use your got there is going to depend on which one which uh, faction that is. Okay, they have increased the number of low slots from four to five and added unique bonus to guard destroyers. Small defense module speed reduction minus 12.5%. They added a unique bonus to guard cruisers. Small defense module speed reduction minus 12.5% and medium defense module speed reduction negative 17.5%. Now they also increased the drone velocity bonus for destroyers using drones from 12.5% to 25%. And they changed the optimal range 20 plus 25 percent bonus for destroyers using targets to range plus 25 percent now offer a bonus to accuracy fall off as well and added a new effect to sniper mode drone velocity uh, plus 25 percent so looks like they they did give destroyers a little bit of a buff there that's very nice Now, it's possible to be unable to locate any relic sites for an extended period of time while scanning. The reward for persistent effort was too little. To address this, they've made the following optimization. Combat and enhance the battle readiness of New Eden. Corporation Tech System is now made available by Concord. Corporations can earn standings through various means and spend them to raise their assessment level and prove different tech activating various bonuses. Now, I corporation mean, standings can be earned from inscription to galaxy, limit time events, and supply gathering missions. So, you, that's, you've got to, to do some, some things. I wonder if they're, they're going to retroactively give all these uh, inscription of the galaxy winners this stuff, or, or if they've got to earn new ones. I, I, I wonder about these things, but uh, I haven't even looked at the the, the whole tech thing and they don't give any any real details in this so uh, if anybody out there has been playing with this uh, how, how good is it uh, that's that's the important question. I would love to know that myself I mean plenty of games uh, do have uh, you know something set up where when you join an organization a corporation or whatever you will get bonuses if that corporation has you know, relics, artifacts, or if they just grind it enough to get certain achievements. You know, they're normally pretty small bonuses, but when you keep on, you know, earning and earning and earning, as a team, you stack those bonuses up, it, it starts to become quite significant. And after a while, 
it, you know, it's good, right? It's just a, it's something really, really awesome. If your corporation has maybe a 5% bonus to all the damage dealt across the entire corp, that's, that's a pretty, uh, that's pretty uh, reasonable. And it's, um, it, it's, it's pretty nice when you get oh. into, um, into like, you know, corporation warfare and things like that. But, but it, it looks like you can actually, uh, Tech that a corporation outpost anchoring time minus seven point five percent for level one. You've got shield management system. You can corporation outpost shield plus ten percent. You can enhance your tax center. Uh, module I mean, those upgrades, are really nice success things. rate. Something uh, for uh, for corporations to work on. I think. Um, I mean, if anything, it, it is it's good team content, which is something that this game has been uh, starved for for a very long time now yeah yeah that's 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 very very true mm, optimizations now they, they, they I, I'm looking at this optimization list and this is again this is things that that, that they needed to be done for a while and but they they've made some changes that are probably really useful to a good number of people now uh you can now sh oh, man. I mean it sounds like there's a there's a very uh, a very very deep and very negative inequity in the game if uh, if your fighters cannot catch up to your your carrier even even without the um, <clears throat> the micro warp drives <laughs> I don't know. Oh, shit. yeah that's that's some crazy that's that's some crazy stuff right there but I'm glad I'm glad they fixed it because if I'm a carrier pilot, that would be a little bit, a bit, a little bit frustrating. <laughs> so uh, I, I can't imagine that happening. But I mean, that's that's some amazing stuff. Now we got a Q and A. Oh, we got a Q and A. These are always fun. Now, it looks like we've got. Uh, looks like we've got five questions. So. Five questions is good. Now let's go, let's let's go ahead and jump into this. Introduce new music into Eve Echoes, including various styles of music that will change according to different scenarios. However, due to some practical situations, we need to prioritize some more important updates. But stop, despite this, we will still we still believe we can have the music iteration in the near future. Stay tuned. No, I like whoever that guy person. is. No. <laughs> somebody, yeah, somebody no, get that, that guy Okay, that was... Nancy, <laughs> that's N.E. Jamie's... Okay, they put who it is. Oh, Cloud is the one who did that first. That that very chipper one. I, I guess Cloud can be very chipper. I, I'm duly noted. Okay, um, oh, then the last two questions are by Cloud, too. Okay, so let's see. Let's see with this one. Okay. Question is, when will be the release of implant dedicated for exploration type role? We have employee advance for PvP, PvE, and mining. There's no implants that's really improve our scanning those data and relic sites. Okay. The answer is, while we understand the desire for such implants, our current focus is on optimizing the basic scanning experience. Once that is completed, we will then start to plan on the related modules and implants. Thank you for your interest and support in the game. That that's uh, that actually makes sense, and I prefer them to get the base thing right and optimized and humming along, and then work on improving that, and not you know sort of optim do it, and then you add some stuff that doesn't really make sense because it doesn't really work very well with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that. I, I like that they're trying to do it right from the start here. Try, they're trying to rework it, and they're trying to do it right. Yeah. And it needs yeah. reworking. Okay. Would you ever consider limiting the max camera zoom out to a ship's class and or range? For example, only capitals and command ships can zoom out to view the whole grid. All other ship camera zoom is double their optimal plus fall off distance. This would improve the scale of ships, feel of combat, and add tactical choices for fleet commanders. I, I think this person is not. playing the wrong game. <laughs> I, I know. I that's what I'm saying. I hope not. But that's 
Let's see what the answer is. Oh, they say, thank you for your suggestion. While we appreciate your idea, the development team has not considered implementing such limitations as many players have already become accustomed to the current setting. We value your input and appreciate your continued support of the game. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah, I, I like, I kind of so understand what they're trying to get at. You know, they're, they're looking for a more immersive experience, which, which well, in itself well, see, is a good the thing, thing about but... It, uh, it's a good thing, but the thing about it is, is you can give yourself that immersive center. Zoom your camera in. Don't lock everybody else into having that zoomed in experience. Some people want the zoom out experience. Some people need that to really see what's going on. I do kind of wish you that know? they... Uh, but you can. Well, I, I kind of wish that they had uh, decided to do uh, something very similar to what we have in EVE Online, where you can... Uh, you can choose different um, different views, such as the cockpit mode and stuff like that. I mean, I don't use it a lot, but it's still kind of fun to use it when you're like warping through certain areas or when you're jumping through certain gates because the animation is really good over there, you know. So uh, having or implementing something like a cockpit view would be great for people who want that experience. But uh, as far as you know hard coding that into the game i think it would really make a lot of people disappointed if, if it happened that way mm -hmm. a lot of people would be very 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 upset yeah yeah definitely and i just noticed that uh, toko nofo had said in the sound of us that we don't talk about the speed tank carrier so appa apparently whatever happened with that 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 carrier that was unable to uh let its fire catch up to it, it it's kind of like black club you just don't talk about it so um I would imagine that carrier yeah, is probably a kill mill at happened. this point. <laughs> I, I don't think anybody could catch it. If you're, Their own fighters couldn't catch it. You think anybody can catch it to kill it? Yeah. Maybe um, it was running from being killed. I'm pretty sure that uh, an interceptor um, by it with a really, really good tackle pilot could probably have uh, killed it. I, I, I don't know. I've, I've seen some, some of the, the speed on those fighters says I've seen somebody's fighters go 30,000 ms. Like they're on you in seconds from a very far away away. Yep. Well, like like I've seen I've seen I've, I've seen somebody drop on on grid like over two hundred away, and yeah, those fighters are on them in seconds, and then they melt. Oh gosh. Yep. Well, at this the is moment. when I was happy. I had a cloaking device. I mean, if you, you know, I would say good for you if you could, uh, if you can, if you can somehow manage to, uh, to build a speed tank carrier. I know that, uh, one carrier that is not a speed tank is the new, um, Sciency carriers, which, uh, the first one was actually smoked a couple of days ago, if I'm not mistaken. That was a, almost 200 billion is kill mail, and it was killed inside of a, uh, capital NDS, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it would, there was, uh... There was a kill mail on on that, and uh, there are a few of those those really running around now. There's mm -hmm. uh, I actually saw a, a little cluster of them. Uh, I think uh, tagged out in uh, Hell Corporation uh, clustered outside Jita whenever I was always heading over to the show location this morning. So uh, yeah, it, they're 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 out there. They're being used. So I, I would expect that we will see more kill mills coming up on those well i mean i'm gonna assume like the people who have that carrier already at the moment given the way that the the plex market is pretty much desolate right now they they had to have swiped to get that damn thing right which basically would it tells me that they probably were more than willing or able to swipe and to insure that thing so i'm pretty sure that the carrier they, they got it back you know one way or another if they swipe to get it they swipe to get it back Probably, probably, mm -hmm. and you got to hope that their significant other doesn't find the credit card Shh. statement. That's, that's a common theme in these uh, pay-to-win uh, mobile games. Uh, is uh, you, you hear in com sometimes, you know, I, I, I hope my my wife or my husband doesn't find the card statement because if, if they do, I'm dead. And then occasionally you hear the story of them having said that, and then they vanish. <laughs> they probably had a credit card statement found. 
Uh, yeah, man. yeah. The struggle, the struggle as a whale is real. You know, everybody thinks life is all fine and dandy. People do not realize that whales are risking life and limb to play this game. Like, I got to I got to be so honest. If, there, if you have to kill them if we're doing it, I got to tell you, if you got to risk life and limb to play a game uh, because it's it's uh, it's choking your finances that much, it's it's time to find a new hobby. <laughs> Yeah, 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 but I mean, it is addictive. I mean, you have to say say that between the community mm. and 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 the uh, the endorphin high you get from from scoring big, uh, you know, that's that's a real thing. It's a real phenomenon. The, these games are really addictive. Yes, I suppose so. to see the war coming up, but we need Jeez. some some fat beats to bring us up into it. This is your Eve Echo State of the World. Welcome back to the State of the War, brought to you by Echoes.MobiBot. All right, now we've got some interesting stuff that's been happening. Um, every, anybody who actually thought the war was over, uh, Apparently, I'm paying attention because silent. While, while they, you know, they they had declared that basically Crabco had surrendered when they became the hippos, are continuing to do uh, what uh, some people would call shenanigans. Wait, silent is doing the shenanigans, or are the uh, silent is is definitely shenaniganing. Shenanigan. Okay. Now, <laughs> yeah, yeah, shenanigan. Now, now, this is in addition to the fact that they're continuing to lay waste to, to uh, PVE pilots in, in various parts of uh, HHH, which is what they are calling the thing, Hungry Hungry Hippos, or just, I just call them the hippos. And uh, so, yeah, the uh, war continues, apparently, uh, just in a new form. And uh, Silent continues to, to kill a bunch of hippos, and now... They've upped the ante and started dropping citadels again in Bay. E yeah. yeah, how's that working yeah. out for them given the fact that they didn't formally surrender? It didn't work out too good this morning. One of them has already been popped, and uh, my intel says <laughs> that the, uh, the other one is not long for this world. Basically, it's it's all Sav related. You want to do anything team related, it's all tied to Sav. It's all tied to making you more powerful, making your Sav more powerful. You know, everything is related to you being more powerful through Sav. And, uh, uh -huh. it, it, man, it, it's just, it's just gotta be that salt in the open wound kind of feeling right now. And, uh, indeed. Man, it's just, it's just not a good no. feeling, man. That's not a good feeling. No. Now, Razzle Dazzle has been up to a little bit more than just what Silent has been doing. Remember, Razzle Dazzle includes EQ. CRB, Red C, all those guys. Now, they've also CRB has been up to what some would not recall shenanigans, but open spanking of some hippos. CRB has acquired two citadels in Esoteria. Interesting. And, yeah. and and like yes. but isn't yeah CR, CRB is independent now so technically uh, that's that's fascinating and I do mean that <laughs> that's fascinating yeah. well no and, and by acquired I mean they took them from 108 boy things have really gone um Things have really gotten interesting out there, haven't they? I mean, it's, the war might be done, but things are really getting quite interesting out there, aren't they? <clears throat> yeah, it's over there, right over there by 108. Now, I, I believe it, they were 108 citadels. I'm, I'm not actually sure. I, uh, I've been a little bit sick lately, so I haven't been paying as much attention to, to some of the things that are, are happening in, in some of the... Uh, yeah, less normally active areas, you could say. But uh, I, I did hear about this whenever it happened. I just didn't hear en enough of the details. But um, yeah, that's that's some crazy stuff. Jeez, man. 
<laughs> but there's more. Uh, and in, in addition to Razzle Dazzle being up to shenanigans, it seems that in the changeover from uh, crabs to hippos, shenanigans are being done by the other side as well. H H H shenanigans. Now, it's not really shenanigans by the coalition itself, more like uh, one of their members. Uh, that would be uh, Meow is actually trying to uh, set Fountain on fire. Uh, of course, Fountain those of us who have been, been in this game long thing, even close to being peaceful since um, since the end of Pantheon. Let's face it. Yeah, yeah, but it it never works out well for anybody who invades Fountain. Not really. It, 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 it <laughs> never does. It never does. It never never does. But uh, they, they've decided to evict uh, Myth. And uh, Interesting. my intelligence says that they're planning on evicting Wolf as well. So they're, they're just basically going to evict them. And uh, there are a lot of timers have been set over there. So there's a lot of fires being set over there in, in Fountain right now. And... Uh, it, it doesn't seem like uh, they're interested in anything other than just blowing things up. Now, I, 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 I don't know why this, this happens sometimes. It does, now, this, 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 can't, you can't say this reflects on all of, of HHH, because HHH is composed of a lot of different groups with a lot of different outlooks. It's a big coalition. Mm. But given the fact that one of the members seems to have gone from uh, savior of the galaxy in the form of you know saying you know getting rid of the this island menace you know to becoming a bully themselves and it, it's just one of those interesting phenomenon that whenever there is a vacuum you know nature abhors a vacuum there's always got to be a villain somebody just decides to step up and fill that role I mean, I don't, who are you I don't, talking about this uh, time <laughs> Uh, that, yeah, that, that would be meow. I mean, because they, they they've just decided that that to, that it is time to evict the people of Fountain. Why? Because they feel they can. I mean, Fountain has been on fire since Pantheon died. There's no, there's never any peace in Fountain. I mean, when you think about what Red Sea did in the past, right? They they threw people yeah. out of Fountain, and <laughs> it was you know, it was just, it was just another another day it was just business as usual for them right and so uh -huh. and so it, when it looks when i look at at fountain i, I look at it, it's just if you live in fountain it's a clusterfuck you you're you, you don't know when the other shoe is going to drop and usually it doesn't drop in slow yeah. motion it drops it you are very well aware that it's dropping in a rapid way where you're probably not going to have very much time to react to to what's happening uh, so, uh, I mean, I wouldn't exactly say that Meow is behaving like villains. I mean, they have been treated pretty harshly themselves. I mean, what are you going to do? Like, Well, I mean, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, Meow claims that they are doing this in revenge for Bloop being kicked out of Fountain. When, uh, in actuality, if you look at the history of Fountain, they, they had the whole Fountain Accords and everything like that. Every agreement that the, the people of Fountain entered into, it was Boop that ended up breaking it. And often without any kind of communication or, or, or anything with the rest of the people, they just like decide one day they want to do something. Oh, it's against the rules we agreed to. Should we like go to the table and negotiate? No, they just decide they're going to go ahead and do it and then notify the group after the fact that eh, we decided that just didn't apply to us anymore. We're sorry. That's why the people were so upset. That's why they kept on attacking Boop during the war with Silent. That's that's why all of that over there was happening. So it, it's just it's just absolutely crazy that uh, Meow thinks that they need to avenge Boop for anything, because if anything, Boop were the aggressors and the destabilizing factor in Fountain, and they they were enjoying things. I, I, my understanding is even Myth is getting along with beer. 
I mean, <laughs> there, 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 wow. there, there, there's that's, no that's a... <laughs> major horrors happening. And Fountain was finally enjoying a measure of of of, of stability and peace, and and so. I guess Boop couldn't have that and, and complain to Meow that they they were had their feelings hurt and everything. And I don't think they the actually told the guys Fountain. from Meow. You know, that's, like, I don't think they told them. Fountain is like the third age of Middle Earth. It's never at peace. <laughs> I, I know, I know, but they, 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 they had it. They, I don't, I, I don't know. I think, I think, you know, we, we have to look at a, a watch and have how hope we timed it for the amount of peace that they had there for a minute. But I, I mean, they, they were working on it, and yeah, Meow just said no, and that's. I really think that's because the guys from Boop, so the guys from Yes, you know, because you know, Meow is composed of Boop and Yes. Sold them a bill of goods, saying that they were bullied when actually they were the bullies, and they, you know, because those guys over in Yes, they were pretty rational, sane people. They, they, they don't have exactly a history of of bullying people like Boop did. <laughs> and Boop was so. <clears throat> Boop was very interesting. So. Well, in the sound of us. Yeah, there, 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 there does. It, Damon, there is, is brings up some salt there. I do, I do believe there is some degree of, of salt there. This is why I think Meow has declared eviction, and uh, I'm told that this is re revenge. So, uh, yeah, the, I, I, I definitely agree with Damon. There is definitely some anger and some salt there. I swear, man, this is this is like the nineteen seventies, nineteen eighties biker wars. <laughs> In, indeed. Uh, but uh, was there oh, anything? Oh uh, my! No, no, I, I, I think that that you know, there, there, there's been some skirmishes here and there, and things like that. Uh, Citadel's hit and things like that. But I think those are the really. The major hot spots in the state of the war right now, and uh, we'll see what happens with all of this stuff. I guess so. Being our way off into the musical choices you've made for today. This is his talk on New Eden FM. Welcome back for Eve Talk. All right. Well, we, we do have some interesting topics for discussion here. The biggest topic on everybody's mind, I think, right now, even she put out a video on it, is the fact there is no Plex anywhere to be found on the market. No Plex. <laughs> Not a single solitary you one. Know, and it's so bad, if you want to put up a buy order and say, I will wait in line for somebody to want to sell some and hand it to me, there are so many buy orders up right now, you can't even put one up. Because the game says, too many buy orders, try again later. Yeah, um, <clears throat> so uh, what you guys are experiencing right now is literally the ultimate in uh, in 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 recession in in eve uh, just this is where is durkader yeah i know that durkader was listening to the broadcast earlier and um as an economics expert i think that he probably would uh, would agree that this is probably the worst economic um down or <laughs> the worst economic uh downshift in this entire in the game's entire history in the entire life of the game never has something like this been so bad and i i mean yeah like, it's it uh, please please by all means take it, it it's really bad i mean if you think about it, it it the reason why this is is because of the those those chests that everybody needs plex in order to uh to get them and not only that but because Plex is used for those things, uh, it, it's worth more to use your Plex for those things than it is to sell it on the market. That's a big problem. Because 
you don't want to sell something for less than it's worth. And right now, because of limitations on the way NetEase allows things to go on to the market, you can't sell the Plex for the uh, right uh, high enough price. So that's 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 the problem. We're we're looking at people not being able to Plex everything and stuff like that. So uh, you're looking that, at that's people uh, not being able to Plex anything <laughs> that's the that's the sad part and you're right right now the way that these boxes are 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 essentially using the plex in order for people to open them and there is what we call the pity system it's something very simple that you'll find in a lot of mmos nowadays where if you roll x number of times without finding the ultimate prize you will get it on the you know, X time, right? So in, say, for example, a game like Azure Lane, which is significantly more kind to pay to win players, or, or to, uh, I'm sorry, to uh, free to play players, you might say, I'm looking for this ship, and um, you roll for it 200 times, but on that 200 time, you're, you're guaranteed to get this ship if you have not rolled for it, and you have not received that ship. It's, it basically just kind of sort of guarantees some, uh, some fair play, gives people an opportunity to kind of go, all right, well, you know, um, at some point I am going to get this particular item that I'm looking for. Well, I mean, a high set carrier was enough of an incentive for people to go, well, if I don't get it right now, I'm going to get it eventually. The thing is, it, you have to, I think you have to roll for it 600 times, if I'm not mistaken, and, and, and not get it over the course of, of 600 times before you finally get this, uh, get this carrier. And, uh, <laughs> needless to say, that's a lot of, that, that's a, that's a lot of money. You know, at the end of the day, that is still a lot of money. Oh, really I think yeah. someone calculated it, and I believe that in order to get, like to get a guaranteed box where you will get this ship, uh, I believe that someone calculated it at around 6,000 plex, but if I'm wrong, someone please correct me in the sound of us. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that was, um, that was what, what uh what one of the players uh stated that you'd be looking at if you want to to buy this now i haven't really been logged into the game in a while now so i'm not sure what the conversion rate is into usd but i do know that six thousand plex is nothing to sneeze at it really isn't that is a lot of flex Yep, and in the meantime, anyone who is playing this game as a uh, as a free to play player, well, unfortunately, you're not going to find Plex because uh, you can check this out on a Sheep's video, which it, it was really well done. I checked it out right before we went live on the air, uh, and you'll you'll find it above the uh, the situation going on uh, between Damon Zell and uh, and, and Juni, uh, but. <clears throat> She did make a video concerning the problem that is going on right now. And at the moment, based off of the current economics of the game and how much Plex is worth, it is worth somewhere around 7 million isk per Plex. Which means that even if it went on the market, it would be probably... The, the first the first ones that you see on the market would probably be anywhere between uh, 10 to 12 million because you know how people are. People always kind of... Uh, elevate and uh, and inflate the prices in order to make the most amount of money when something is in you know high demand on the market well because there's a cap limit of about five million if I'm not mistaken Damon please correct me if I'm wrong because there's a cap limit on uh, on how much you can sell Plex for people are not going to sell the Plex on the market because NetEase won't allow them to sell the Plex for the value that it's currently worth so that means that no one is going to sell any Plex on the market at all because the demand is so high that well now people should be making more money off of the off of the, the Plex that they're buying or off of the AUR they're buying. <clears throat> so now you have a, a really nasty um, a conundrum, right? It's the chicken or the egg scenario. Well, I need uh, I need Plex on the market, but no one's going to sell the Plex on the market because they can't sell it at the rate that they want, and no one's going to you know undervalue their Plex, and so everyone's just going to turn around and and use it to buy you know buy lock boxes because they're more it's more valuable <laughs> and and uh i, I don't know man it, it like there is no way there is no way that netties could have not seen that coming 
there's no way that they could have not seen this problem coming. And I would imagine that if they want to save this situation, the easiest way would be to take off the, the restrictions on Plex. People will start to sell it if they can make money off of it. But in the meantime, people who are playing this game as free-to-play players, true free-to-play, and they are farming ISK to make their monthly subscription fees, well, those people are kind of screwed because you can't get Plex at all. Like, it's like, swipe your credit card or your alpha. That's, that, that is, that is, that is uh -huh. E for you right now. Yeah. Oh, Durka Dur actually put a statement in, uh, The Sound of Us. Uh, so, um, you'll have to explain, in fact, if you want to, you're more than welcome to, uh, come on the show and, and explain, uh, and explain your, uh, your thoughts on this, this current economical problem. You're on, you're, you're always welcome with us, Durka. Um. I think, <clears throat> I think the, uh, um, uh, Alandria, could you please tag, uh, tag him? Uh, but I, I I'm think, taking care of right now. I, I think that, that, like, uh, I don't know how that's good for the market <laughs> because of how many other problems it's causing in the market. But please, you, you have studio access, so, uh, jump on in, let us know what you think, Durka. I mean, you're, you, you run the, um, uh, Equinox, if I'm not mistaken, that is the name of your, um, of your investment firm, and so uh, you're pretty plugged into the Eve Echoes economy. So, number one, welcome to the show, and uh, yeah, you know, thanks for coming on. Along with my check, you sound great. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, sure. Hey, thanks for uh, thanks for having me on. So, uh, yeah, so my thoughts in regards to the the update. So, yeah, I know people are a bit surprised when I say it's great for the market. Um, so th there's just a nuance here. It's very bad for indie. So anybody who was a builder, they really got screwed over. But for the market as a whole, I think uh, the 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 carrier has been great because it's uh, it's certainly moved a lot of isk around that has been sitting on the sideline. So a lot, I think, a lot of the inflation that that was kind of accumulating from Everybody ratting with uh, with the new with the new uh, nano cores, where uh, you know people are telling me they're they're making four three four hundred mil a night just farming. So you know that money that money gets accumulated, and it's really going into two a couple places, uh, mostly plaques, and really the most best in slot items. This is where most of the money will go. Um, so you can see probably there's a lot of inflation right now in the sense that. Uh, there's actually demand, a lot of demand for modules, uh, for the new, for and fighters, for the carriers, and the carrier itself selling, selling really, really well. If you look at the market, there's actually quite a lot of volume on the buy and sell side, which, um, which is actually, you're beating records because the, all the other eight, uh, capital ships that we have, um, I, 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 and then here I'm talking about like the four carriers, uh, the four faction carriers and dreads. Uh, there's never been any market activities. Nobody's ever used the market to trade for them. Whoever did, it didn't bring results, so they didn't do it again. And it would essentially trade, work them out on contracts. But this this ship is actually trading on market, which is uh, is good because it, it, I think uh, it's it's best for price discovery. Um, for, for really figuring out what's the fair market value of that ship. And and right now, it's really in flux because you can acquire with the Plex, so it's tied to the Plex price. Um, obviously, the Indies, like I was saying, they got screwed because the build cost of the ship is, you know, significantly higher than what it trades for. So they're, they're already out of the market from, from day one. At least the good news is they didn't have to invest money uh, into this uh you know they, they, it's not like they got um they had this already spent a bunch of resources pre preparing for it and then re getting screwed by nindies because that would have been a big uh uh you know f a flip off so and stuff like that as well so i mean it could be really good as far as the the plex is concerned like you were saying but I think that uh, first, Netties is going to have to learn that, look, you, you can't control the market the way that you want it to, to be controlled right now because it's going gonna, it's gonna to kill, you know, kill what you're trying to build. It's, it's literally putting, a, uh, putting a, a noose on the, on the goose that lays the golden egg, so to speak. Yeah, so just to bring some nuance to my comments, uh, you know, I was, I was talking about the market in, in general, but... Uh, perhaps to be more clear, I was not implying Plex within this because Plex is really its own situation. 
Um, I it, certainly this week the market is is heavily affected. I expect that next week, once they update the uh, uh, the price, the max price for the Plex, we're going to see a little bit more activity on the market. Um, because I know for a fact there's a lot of Plex sellers who are on the sideline right now, and the problem is not so much that there isn't Plex to sell, although definitely a lot of a lot of Plex is getting removed from the system, so. The quantity is getting reduced, but there are sellers out there, but they're waiting for the price to go up. And um, that the cap that Nitty's put certainly, I personally don't think it was um, it was it's that good. Uh, you know, they did this to prevent pumpers uh, from moving up the plex price, um, which which I would say was real, but I don't think it was that big of a problem. Uh, that it required this because you know essentially right now is they're not allowing by by blocking the the plex price with uh, with, uh you know from with the bottom and a um a roof they're not they're not allowing the market to decide what's the fair market value for the plex right and, and this is going to cause i think this is going to cause a lot of stress down the line because i think for it's going to create a scarcity in people's mind where you know, for the longest time, you've always been able to acquire Plex, right? It was always available. You could always find it. It wasn't always a great price, but you could find it. Now what happens is a lot of people are on the sideline and they're getting worried about, for example, you were saying earlier, paying their subscription. Uh, and and also think, you know, Plex is directly related to insurance. So maybe some people right now are not able to insure their ship. Um, so it, it's definitely going to have some consequences. And I think it's going to affect the way people viewplex and it's going to make it a seller's market for a very long time because people are going to want to uh stock more plex now than they did perhaps previously uh to protect themselves in case a situation like this would would appear again so uh likely you know we'll see the obviously we'll see plex price rise next week this is without a doubt um will will we have another week like we did this week it's really going to depend on the market appetite for buying plex and turning it into the uh the container buying the keys for the containers uh from this event and then uh getting uh getting the carrier right because you're spending you spend six thousand plex and you're guaranteed a carrier so right now there's a lot of speculators playing that market uh putting a lot of buy pressure on plex because uh the plex price i think it comes down to about like 35 billion something like that for for the cost for the carrier but you get a bunch of other stuff so uh i'm sure a bunch of people are are, are, are making money right now with that wedge you know next week the plex price is going to go the limit's going to go up so obviously i expect the market to to go up but we'll see if people are still willing to pay the max price uh, which is going to be next week to get that carry right so do are you, we still going to get so Sorry, as a, no, as a question, do you think that uh, like has Netties already re kind of released a statement saying that they're willing to kind of you know at least uh, move the cap up so that people can start to sell Plex on the market for what uh, for the value that they believe that it's worth at the moment? I've I've not heard anything uh, on that matter, and you know I've I've everybody's I have the same channel as everybody, so you know I'm waiting for the announcements. I don't think it's something they're going to tackle. I think they're just going to wait and, and uh, let the market try to kind of recover itself. You know, once they move up the cap, uh, my guess is next week is going to be a little bit less wild. And, and we're going to see some, there's going to be some activity on the market for uh, with sell orders showing up. So it's going to give a chance for people to buy. Um, regardless, I would say if you're in the current predicament where you need to buy plaques right now, uh, the best, the, the only way really to acquire it is, um, well, actually, actually, there's there's different approach, uh, but primarily, if you want to acquire Plex, you can put up a buy order, right? And and everybody's everybody's working at the same price. So what does that mean? Is it's like a queue. So the older order are gonna get filled first, and uh, the newer orders are gonna get filled last, right? But as these old orders get filled, you know, your order that you put up. Uh, is going to go up in the queue, and so you might, you, the market might fill it because there might be people selling Plex at that price, uh, and also whenever insurance gets triggered, um, it will automatically fill those orders. So there is a certain sell amount volume of Plex that's coming through. So it's possible to get Plex, but you have to put yourself in the queue. It might take a day, it might take two days, 
Uh, I've, I've not actively been trading it, so I really can't give any timeline as to what it is. And obviously, volume is going to vary depending on which which day it is and the amount of activities happening in the game. Um, so that's one way. Another way is if you are running short on your subscription, um, try to find somebody in your corporation that has um, that has a, a Plex in their wallet. And with an, uh, an officer, you can set up a Corp Omega clone. And what's going to happen is that player who has the Plex, um, it will be withdrawn from their wallet, and then the Corp clone Omega will be able to be applied to your character. So you're going to get the game time. Now that person, uh, doing a deal like this, you're doing it off the market, so uh, you'd be able to barter for the Plex at a, a different price point. Right. So rather than only offering the max price that you can through the market, you could give it, let's say, 200, 200,000 more perplex. So that's perhaps a way to emphasize uh, uh, getting a trade, right, and getting a subscription. It's very good advice, too, because I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of players out there that are wondering, you know, how on earth they're going to do this. And I know that my corporation is one of those uh, those corporations where if you really need Omega, um, they will help you to get Omega, uh, and I'm pretty sure that there is already, you know, something of an outreach program going on for our pilots that might be in a situation where they can't pay for these clones while this Plex, um, you know, while this this Plex uh, drought is is happening in the game. Uh, so, you know, that's that's just good community advice. Uh, you know, get involved with, uh, with with corporations that that can that can actually help you when you're in a when you're in a bad way, right? Right. The first thing I would say is I don't know. Um, n now, if I were to speculate, uh, I think I think there's going to be a few months where um, the Plex market is going to be a seller market. So I wouldn't be surprised to see, as every week goes by, we start seeing the Plex cap price, the the yeah the cap for the Plex price go up. Um, so and, and which would keep giving it potential to go reach that spot. Um, and again, there might be more speculators that come into the market and, and because there's going to be such, th th that might pump the market up. So there might be like elements, uh, of people who just buy Plex in order to, to move the price up, right? Because they might already be sitting on a lot of Plex and, and likely it's going to keep going up. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's likely going to be, uh, difficult to get Plex. So if you get a chance... Uh, I would suggest, you know, get your Plex, be, make sure you get what you need. Uh, make sure you have a backup for your next month's subscription. Um, and, and, you know, don't go full consumer and just, like, buy anything because there's always peaks and down uh, within the week. Um, best time to buy Plex, without a doubt, is when there is a lot of PvP activity uh, that will generate Plex uh, sell orders. And generally, those or uh, sell orders are a little bit below what the I, I, what I would call the the, the trade price of, for players. Uh -huh. So All weekends right. are a good time. Right. Good time to look for volume. That's good advice. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Yeah, Maybe that source is bad. Uh, who don't? Who knows? But expect that there's going to be another event like this happening soon. Uh, and really, I would say it could be early next month and it could go all the way up to the anniversary. Um, but that's going to be another big market trigger event that could cause um, surge in Plex price uh, or, or other unseen market activities, right? So... I think that I'd be more concerned if Netties didn't raise the, um, you know, the the potential sell price of the Plex, which needs to be done uh, drastically at the moment. The Plex really can't go anywhere, right? Because there there's a limit on how how much you can sell that for, and uh, increasing the limit would would you know attract more potential sellers, which it at would. the moment it, it's it's desperately needed. No one's gonna sell Plex. If they, you know, if they feel like, well, my Plex is worth a lot more, thinking about how much this carrier is worth. I mean, I think Damon Zell said that it's it's worth what sixty, sixty. I think it was thirty billion. 
worth of isk in plex and i would assume that that number because damon's pretty good with numbers i'm going to assume that that number is based off of whatever the maximum plex, uh, plex price is or based off of what the average plex price is so that number if they can if they raise the value then from an isk standpoint the carrier will be worth more which is which would be great for the market i think uh but from yeah. the um, from the standpoint of a person who is trying to you know i guess keep their subscription rolling i guess that's a whole different problem right because now you're paying like twice as much as you would ordinarily pay, pay you know pay for plex but at least yeah. you can keep paying for your subscription fee you may not be making as much money as you want to be making or keeping as much money as you want to be keeping but at least it keeps the lights on right i mean you know yep. that's, that's called inflation yeah <laughs> we've had that sh we've yeah. all been a part of that in real life right but I think oh that, yeah i think that right now the thing that the game desperately needs is for netties to just go look the cap on this price has got to go up. In fact, I'll be honest, even though I know why they want to control it, I, I get why they why it was a good idea, like, you know, a couple years ago when they when they set that up. It's no longer working for this game. It's just not working anymore. You know what I mean? It, it's yeah. no longer working for this game. And every time, and please, Dirk, please uh, for correct me if I'm wrong, but every time they do things like this where they decide that they want to, uh, I guess, push something else like this into the game ecosystem, they actually devalue the ISK just a little bit more because, I mean, Plex... It's like everybody just like it's it's all about the AUR. It's not even about Plex anymore. It's like it's about the AUR. You buy the AUR and uh, and and you pay for shit with the AUR, or you you're gonna pay for it with the Plex. It, it really just depends upon what they're asking for. But some of the things like that I've I've been looking at, they're asking specifically for AUR. You know what I mean? Um, in this case, it just so happens that they're asking for Plex, which is a good thing. But jeez, man, you I can mean, also acquire uh, with <laughs> AUR. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, definitely, um, you know, one of the big philosophy of EVE has always been the capacity to build your own things. Um, and in a sense, you know, with Nitty is not really following that philosophy. Um, and the way they market things, the players who build things are somewhat in competition with Nitty's in the sense that at the end of the day, Nitty's makes money by giving you things for money right so yeah. and and they, you know this is really where they screwed uh cap builders in a sense because you know that's really their territory to build the, the capitals right and that he's always kind of made their money on the nano cores and you know other side things now they're directly get, selling you the ship uh which which is gonna have a long lasting effect on the market i don't think it's gonna be viable to build for for a really long time because there's gonna be such a big amount of blueprints um and and holes out there available that the the second end price will stay below the the build price for for a certain amount of time it's going to be terrible given uh you know it, it's really terrible when you think about the fact that being able to build these ships at a really good efficiency is as much of a skill point investment as being able to actually fly the ships <laughs> it's, right it's yeah. crazy it, it really is crazy when you think about it and that's that's a that's got to be a really tough pill to swallow if you're you're like my friend uh ghost from um my first corporation or one of my first corporations really wonderful guy but he was one of those people who he didn't have the time to sit there and to just like play the game like everyone else he might have only gotten um you know an hour a couple of hours a day or maybe he could play while he was sitting out in his squad car he was a police officer and um and for him, being able to build things, that was the game, right? Because, hey, I can't really get involved and do this thing that I want to do or do that thing that I want to do, but at least I can, you know, feel like I'm a part of the team by being able to build things um, that the corporation is using. And it's like, just slowly but surely, more and more and more of that was just taken away. And I, I think that that... That is, that is, in it. I guess that's the kind of sort of the killer part about the whole thing, and 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 why this is why this is 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 so bad, uh, I guess yeah. to that extent. But, um, I mean, uh, so that's some advice to and for any and everyone. Yes. Yes, that 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 really really is. And, and I think with that, that's going to be bringing us to a close also. And uh, 
Now, I do have to say that, you know, I am uh, normally contractually obligated to be telling people uh, as a secret CEO of Boop to Boop and Local, but uh, I actually passed my secret CEO title off to my secret XO. So, um... Uh, I'm not actually a secret a secret CEO of Boop anymore. Uh, that's so, some weird stuff. You just magically stop being a secret CEO of Boop when the, they're I, I, uh, I, I know I they're going to go to I, war I, or I something. Couldn't, I, I could not, in good conscience, remain a secret CEO of Boop given their behavior in Fountain. I just, I couldn't do it. it, it call it my protest to all of this. And so I'm just not going to tell you to boop any mo lo more in local. What what I will to tell you do, tell a cat pun in local. Those are absolutely incredible. Jeez. Okay. Mm-hmm. So cat pun in local people. Words to live by. Mm-hmm. All right. Love, hugs, and p kisses, guys. Thank you for uh, tuning in to this week's episode of New Eden FM.